Hey guys, good morning. So we are back to answering some questions. I'm going to try to make it quick so that I can get it started uploading before I leave for work, which is any minute. <laughs> so uh, Bridget says, what is your biggest fear minus snakes? Yuck. Um, I, you know, biggest fear, I don't know, but if we're talking about rodents and icky things, um, <laughs> rodents, there you go. That's my biggest fear is rodents, mice, rats. Oh, I hate that. So spiders, I don't really care. I don't really want them on me. Um, if I see one on the wall, I kind of like, Ugh, but I'm not like fearful of them, but with rodents, I, I am. Um, I don't know what I think they're going to do to me. I just get creeped out. Uh, Wanda says, you are amazingly organized and I really admire that about you. So my question is, let us assume that it is your day to do things around the house so that you will be able to go to work on Monday with everything in order. At the last minute, you've been invited to an all day fun event on the very day when you're going to stay home and clean and do prep work. What would you do, stay home and clean or go have fun? <laughs> Well, I have experienced this in the last few weeks and go have fun because that's my overall intention right now. Yes, organi being organized is important to me, um, but it doesn't rule my life. And so like this week on Sunday, I actually had a really bad migraine, so I did not get much done. Um, but I just did my meal prep Monday night when I got home. So there you go. Uh, Amanda M says, if you could learn to do anything, what would it be? I haven't thought about these answers. So I'm reading them on the fly. Uh, probably read music. Um, I tried when I was in high school to learn how to read music and I really struggled with it. And so I've always kind of toyed with the idea of as an, as an adult to try and learn again, but you know, I've got so many other things. It's like, I never really seem to get to it. So, uh, Whisper Lola says, with all of the NSVs that you share, so NSV for you guys that don't know is a non scale victory, what have you noticed as an NSV in regards to food addiction? It seems like part of recovery, which you talk a lot about, is humility. And I'm wondering if you think about the fact that part of recovery may be relapse for some people, and that whether at our highest weight or lowest weight, we are the same person and that we are only one bite away from our addiction. I absolutely believe that I could easily slip back into, you know, being a compulsive overeater. I mean, I still consider myself a compulsive overeater. Um, I don't think I'll ever get back to 500 pounds. I really would hope not. Um, but you know, I also feel like I just have today, um, one day at a time. So even when I was at a treatment center for eating disorders in 2011, um, you know, a lot of the girls said, I'm never coming back. I'm never doing this again. I'm, I'm learning everything I need to learn in this moment. And, you know, while I appreciate that and I appreciate that, that thought process for me, I don't ever want to say, you know, that's never going to happen again. I appreciate the fact that I am self-aware enough to know that if I do fall into my food addiction again, that I can ask for help and seek the treatment I need to get better. So, um, I, I do feel like I'm one bite away from falling into a slippery slope. Um, you know, I, I don't feel like I'm not white knuckling it. I'm not, um, I don't feel like I'm in a danger zone. I've actually started seeing my therapist every other week now, my dietitian I'm seeing again in five weeks. So, you know, I, I feel pretty stable, um, but I'm not, uh, cured. I'm not recovered. Um, it, I will always have issues with food and I'm aware of it. So I hope that answers it. Uh, Susan says, how old were you when you went to live on your own? So I moved out when I was 18 and then eventually came back to live at the house. I think when I was about 20 for a little bit. And then I also came back to live at the house when I was 23 so kind of back and forth a little bit but I think 23 was the last time I lived uh, with my family uh, let's see from purple lobsters when you think back to the person you used to be how do you process who that person was versus who you are now do does it feel like another person if so, are you angry with your old self? Sympathetic, compassionate. I ask this because I struggle to love my old self and know that until I do, I won't be able to heal and move forward. 
and you seem extremely self-aware and I'd love to hear about your experience. So I am lucky and blessed enough to have had a therapist that I worked with um, a, a lot in a year. Um, I mean, I kind of worked with her a little bit longer than that, but we really um, put our heads down and did some good work in a year and she taught me self-care and self-compassion and self-love and because I, I had a lot of anger with my old self and I, you know, kind of mad at the world, mad at God, mad at everybody that this had happened. And, um, you know, I really had to look at myself with those, um, self love eyes and realize that I was hurting, you know, I was sick. I was, uh, miserable and I'm just so thankful that I didn't take my life or that, um, I didn't give up. So I don't view myself with, um, criticizing eyes or hateful eyes. I don't know what the point of that would be. I mean, it is what it is. I was that way and I am this way now. Um, if I hadn't gone through those things, I wouldn't be the great person that I am now. And I recognize that. So I, I can't be angry with that person. Um, when I look at pictures, I still see that that's me, even though I look differently now. I still look at a picture and, and see that that was me in that moment. And I don't look at the picture with disgust. Um, but I don't know that I ever did. Um, I know some people do, but I'm not sure that I ever really looked at, um, looked at pictures like that. Even my early videos, when I watch them now, I just feel sad. And, um, and I care for that soul that was struggling. I don't feel like, Oh, I can't believe I did that. You know, I don't, I don't have that opinion of myself and I don't know what that's about. I don't know if that was, um, trained or just ingrained in me or whatever, but I've discovered that hating myself just does not do me any favors. So, um, recognizing that, uh, I was struggling and that I'm doing a lot better now, I, I think is the main thing I do. I don't know how to advise you of that. I've had friends personally um, that I've talked to, especially with eating disorders that are trying, trying, trying to change that opinion of themselves. And all I can say is how, how it's worked for me and how I view myself. Um, and I don't know if it helps or not. I, I hope it helps, you know. I hope all of you guys that struggle with self-image and, um, just our own self-worth can see that we are beautiful people regardless of what we look on the outside you know we all are individual souls um, we're not here to be hated especially by ourselves who I mean I hated myself more than I hated anybody else in the world so I'm gonna leave it with that and um, you know, again, it's a little bit rambly. I'm not sure if that helps anybody or not. I really hope it does. And I still struggle with self-worth sometimes, um, but I've come a long way. And you guys can too. That's, I guess, my point I'm trying to make. So I hope you're doing well, and I will see you tomorrow for more answers. Okay, bye.